Okay, guys, so this is what we're gonna make. Um, and this is how we're gonna make it. You can use any sheet of lined paper, okay? It can be a loose leaf sheet, it can be in any sort of notebook. I used one of these composition books, um, which I have decorated the outside of this one. Lovely, lovely. But it's, it's just one of these basic books, okay? The only thing that you need is you need there to be at least 25 lines on the page. So you're gonna turn your page uh, sideways, right? Normally you'd be looking at it like this, turn it like this, and number from one to 25, okay? So I'm gonna show you on a new sheet how to do this. We're just gonna start at the bottom, or on the left-hand side is what it is at this point, and number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on. Okay, so it just so happens that in these composition books there are exactly 25 lines on a page. If you have more than that on the piece of paper that you're using, just stop at 25. That's as far as you're going to go. Okay. Next, I want you to fold your piece of paper in half. So if you're using a composition book, you can just tuck this in, make sure that everything is lined up, and fold it in half. And I'm actually going to do it the other way fold it in half. If you have a loose leaf piece of paper or a different kind of notebook, I just want you to try to fold this as neatly and cleanly as possible so that the sides of your pages line up with each other. Okay, so just one nice clean fold. I'm going to leave it tucked under like this so that I'm really just looking at half of a page numbered one through 25, okay? And I'm going to do the letters I, F, E, E, L. And I'm gonna show you exactly what number to begin your letter on and where to end. So for example, the I goes from one to four. It takes up the lines one, two, three, four on your page. Each of the letters is going to be of equal width and equal height. Our height is already determined by the space that we have between this red line here and the bottom of the fold. And the width is determined by the lines on your page. So each one of our letters is going to be four lines wide. Okay, so I'm gonna do my I and then I'm gonna skip two spaces and then I'll do the feel word, leaving just one line in between each letter for the space. So we'll do this together. So starting at one and going to four, we're gonna do block letters for our I. So between lines four and five, that's where you're gonna end your letter. And I want you to just block out the letter I. go all the way to the edge of our page. So I am going to leave lines two and three for the center, for the main pillar of my eye. And then I'm gonna come out using lines one and four for these, the top and bottom part of my eye. So now I have the letter I, okay? Now I'm gonna skip over to line seven. So lines five and six, I guess you could call them columns when we're looking at them this way. Lines five and six, we're gonna leave those completely blank. Okay, that's gonna be the space between our word. Now F looks like this. So between six and seven, 
we're going to just draw a straight line down, just tracing that blue line on our paper between number six and number seven. Now the top of our F is going to span four columns, so we're gonna go across seven, eight, nine, and 10, and then stop before we get to 11. Now I want the base of my F to be the same width as the main part of my I, so that's two lines. So lines seven and eight. I'm gonna do the bottom part of my F there. And then coming over to the edge of 10, do the top part of my F. Just like this. So I'm trying to keep all of the blocky parts of my letter about the same width, right? So I have I, two spaces, F. Now I wanna leave spaces between each of my letters in the word feel. So I'm gonna skip over column number 11 and between 11 and 12, start creating my E. And again, four spaces wide, so we're gonna go 12, 13, 14, 15, and stop. Do the same at the bottom. F. One, two, three, four columns wide. And then we'll just create our E. Again, the main, this up and down part of our E, I want it be, to be two columns wide. So I'm gonna just trace over from here. I'll try to keep this line even with this line, even with this line as much as I can to make it look clean. And like all of these letters are basically out of the same sort of font. Make sense? Okay, so now we've gotta do another E because this is the word I feel, or the words I feel. So skip over line 16. Between 16 and 17, we're gonna draw down along that line. <clears throat> and then four over, so we're gonna do 17, 18, 19, and 20. One, two, three, four. I'm trying to create exactly the same E as we did before, so it looks nice and even. And you can definitely use a ruler for this if you want to, but what's nice about doing this on lined paper is a lot of that straightening, keeping it straight work is already done for us. We have these lines as our guides. Okay, so now we have I fee. We just need one more letter, our L. So we're gonna skip over column 21, draw down on that line between 21 and 22, all the way over to the edge of 25. And again, this column is gonna be two wide. Draw it down, try to keep this even. And there you have it, I feel. And when you color this in, it's gonna stand out even more. If you have colored pencils or markers or crayons or something that you wanna use, I use these, um, these Prismacolor colored pencils, which are awesome, but I have these at home. And they're just super smooth, like butter, I love I love coloring with these things, but I don't expect you to have them at home. However, when you're back in class, I have these pencils mixed into our colored pencil containers, and I also have more in the cupboard. So when we're doing coloring with colored pencils, seek out these Prismacolor colored pencils, and you'll see how much better they color than regular like Crayola colored pencils. It's super, super nice to color and blend with these. But if you don't have colored pencils at home, you can simply shade these in with your pencil. And I'm gonna do this just really fast. The coloring part is the part that you can, you know, spend the most time on if you want. Really make a nice job, but I'll just 
show you quickly. Just color them in with your pencil, if nothing else. But this is a fun, simple way to learn how to make evenly spaced block letters. And hopefully now that we've done the I feel part together, maybe you feel like you can do another word all on your own. And what you can do is you can unfold your paper. I'm just gonna finish this real quick. And again, you can do a much nicer job than what I'm doing here. But you can unfold your paper. If you have a ruler, you can just draw a little line right here and maybe, you know, depending on how tall you want your letters to be, just do another line. You could tr trace this faint red line here or you can go up a little bit further. Just try to keep it perfectly straight. And then you can decide, you know, you have 25 columns here. So for whatever word you choose to finish out this sentence, I feel blank, you can try to get evenly spaced letters by figuring out how many letters you have in your word and you know you have 25 columns to work with. So how many columns wide does each of your letters need to be? When I did, I feel gassy. Gassy has five letters, right? G-A-S-S-Y. One, two, three, four, five. I have 25 lines, so I did a little bit of division. 25 divided by five equals five. So I knew that I had five lines, five columns here, for the width of each one of my letters. Now, I did not put spaces in between my letters in the word gassy, like I did up here. Up here, I put spaces in between each one of these letters, between F, E, E, L. Down here, I just figured, ah, I won't put spaces between the letters. I'll just try to draw them so that they don't touch, so that it's still clearly legible. So. If you end up with a five letter word, like I did, then you know that you have exactly five columns for each one of your letters. So you can just sort of mark down one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm gonna mark here. So I'll show you on this one. If I were to do that word again, I'd count over one, two, three, four, five, go down. I have to create my letter between here and here. And then my next one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just make little tick marks to guide you. And I go over from ten, another five after that, fifteen, tick mark, tick mark, twenty, and then all the way to twenty-five. So now I have these five equally spaced areas. And I know that I want my letters to touch all sides, top, bottom, and side. And one of the reasons I chose for us to do I feel up top here is because these are all block letters with nice straight horizontal and vertical lines. No curves, okay? So these letters, I, F, E, and L, much easier to make than any letter that's gonna have a curve. When you have a curve, that's when things start to get much more difficult. But it's a fun challenge, so I encourage you to try it out.